What's up, everyone? It's Vapor Stray Now it's time for some more of my story, Sathandra and the Titan of the Apocalypse. In this episode, we will be covering Chapter 3 of this book called Sathandra Explores the Swamp of El Glashar. Sathandra was feeling the cuts and gashes that were still on her. The healing magic she knew could restore her consciousness, but she still couldn't heal the wounds from Zathelion quickly. She came across a vast, forested, misty swamp, stretching out of sight in both directions. Sathandra knew there was nothing left behind her in the graveyard. The entire ocean coastline was burning with cursed flames that could harm her like normal flames could not. She looked to her side. Kilsar and Vaporsmith were with her. Sithander said, will you come with me into this swamp? I have no idea what dark fates await us. Will you still come? Yes, said Kilsara. Vaporsmith said, I don't really have a choice. The graveyard behind us is an inferno, so of course. Sithander knew there had to be a lot of sinister creatures in this swamp. Then realized she was evil herself. She decided to transform back into the immense crocodile who could walk on two legs but lying down disguise herself with the other crocodiles but she would have to remove all of her clothes and her sight to do it and remind herself to put the clothes in a bag have Kilsara of Aperswith hold the bag then later if she decided to transform into her semi-human like form to put the clothes back on and take back her weapon even though she felt she didn't need to disguise herself because she could kill any crocodile or alligator she wanted Sethandra was many times stronger than any normal reptile and she did not care for their safety Sithandra conjured some boots and waders, then waded through the swamp. As she waded through the swamp, she saw tall stands of grass and houses on stilts. She continued to wade through the swamp, then found what looked like logs moving through the swamp. She found it odd that the logs were moving. One of the logs moved closer. She found it had eyes. It moved closer to her. She realized it wasn't a log, it was an alligator. It lunged out of the black waters of the swamp. She lunged at the scythe, then seized it and began to fight it with her scythe. It knocked the scythe out of her hands into the swamp, but she had no time to retrieve it. Punching it and kicking it with all of her might, she fought the alligator. After a tussle, she pulled out the two cursed knives Athelion used on her and slashed at to kill the alligator. It floated belly up. She reached down into the waters to retrieve her scythe and found the handle in the black waters and pulled it out. She made it towards one of the houses on stilts and climbed that out of the black water onto one of the ladders up onto the deck of the house. She sat on the deck of the house looking out at the black waters and the enormous cypress trees that made up the immense swamp. Kilsar and Vaporsmith climbed up the ladder with her out of the house on stilts. One of the sinister demons who was in the house saw her climb onto the deck and mistook her as an alligator. What is an alligator doing here? I thought they could not climb under the deck. Sithander stood up and said, an alligator? She said questioningly, wait, you can stand up. Could you be a legendary Scythan? She then passed out from exhaustion and did not awake for many hours. Until the next day came, she opened her eyes. She looked at herself, hoping it was a dream. She saw her entire body was still covered in slashes and scars from the previous battle. Then sat up and looked around. She saw Kassara and Vaporsmith were looking at several old demons fishing off the edge of the platform that the house was on. As she watched the demons, she thought she should speak to them. Then a tall, aged, pale gray male demon with black eyes noticed she was there. Then said, what is a Scythan woman doing all the way out here? And why are you covered in blood? I was attacked repeatedly by a dark sorcerer named Zathelion. He calls himself the world's greatest evil, replied Sithandra. Hmm, maybe that's why, said the demon. Then Sithandra asked, where am I? The demon replied, you're in the swamp of prisoners. My name is Gormyro. I'm a fisherman in this swamp and also a felon. So where is this swamp, asked Sithandra. This... Swamp, he said, is in Florida, but I was far north of there before, said Sithandra, confused. What you need to understand, said Germayro, is the mist you walked into teleports you directly into the swamps of Florida. So tell me about Zathelion. I met him recently. Germayro said, I've never seen him, but I've heard stories. He's known by many names in Florida, one of them being Death with Legs. Everywhere he goes...
Death and destruction of legendary power follow him. It is said that he knows magic that no other wizard knows. He is the most frightening of the dark legends. Nothing in the swamp is anything like him. He can set the world ablaze and kill, and kill anyone he wants dead. If he truly wants you dead, you would be dead as far as I know. I don't think he wants you dead. He just wants you to be tortured into madness. The very fact you're not lying to me that he only wants to torture you makes you a legend right there. So what do you want to do about this goon, Zethelion? He's worse than anyone who's ever wielded a weapon I've ever heard about. I want to stop him from destroying the world and my imps I care about. Germyro paused, his eyes widened in shock. First, I want to show you the wonders of the swamp and teach you everything I know before you go to find him. Because I am certain if you find Zethelion, he will most likely be the very last thing you do find. Even the legendary ones who have found him and lived are marked for death forevermore. So you want to live in the swamp, explore it, fight everything in it, and learn all you can before I send you to your death. Is Zethelion really that bad? asked Zethander apprehensively. Yep, said Germyro, the thousands of corpses and lost souls left in his wake tell a story about him. So, said Sathander, where should I start? You've already started, he said. You managed to battle and defeat a gator. Not a lot in the swamp aside from the homeowner demons would be able to fight a gator alone without help and live to tell the tale. Now we will continue. I will teach you different ways to fight gators. I will also go on to teach you how to wield the weapons used in the south. I will start with guns because they're used a lot here, then move on to knives, then the rest of the weapons used. We'll start with that before moving on to other parts of the swamp. Because you see, although the swamp is very violent and full of death and struggles, it's not like fighting Zethelion. I'm sure you can survive all of it and have fun here. In fact, I will take you to the worst pirate in Florida and have you fight him soon after teaching you the fighting ways of Florida just to prove it. I will go through all the types of guns we use in the South. Pistols, muskets, rifles, shotguns, handguns, machine guns, and cannons. As well as how you use a machete. These are just the basic weapons used here. Even if you already know these weapons, it wouldn't hurt to review them. We will start with the most common death weapon of choice, the high-powered shotgun. This gun is useful for starting out learning guns to fight gators in the swamps. You can also use it to hunt other kinds of animals and sell their skins for cash, which you can use to buy info. Germyro pulled a long, thick gun with two barrels off his back and said, This is a shotgun. This is my primary weapon I explore the swamps with a lot of the time. So what is your primary weapon that you use? Well, she drew her gigantic flaming scythe in front of her, then said, This is my current primary weapon. A scythe crafted from tempered siphon, enchanted metals, and tempered with sorcery. And I'm also editing this at the same time. It is stronger than any human forged steel and is immune to corrosion. It does not crack or bend unless reforged in a siphon furnace. It's one of the few weapons of my kind that I can actually use to duel Zethelion myself. Let's put that in there. However, I need to learn how to remain conscious long enough to, uh, to uh, conscious long enough to actually wield it against him. So do you have any information on surviving Zethelion the death of his legs long enough to fight him? Hmm, I think we need to first learn our fighting, then talk to and battle the pirate king, James Calazar. He's one of the few legendary warriors to face Zethelion and live to tell the tale. He can tell us what he knows. I've never faced Zethelion ever, so I cannot tell you. I've only heard the stories. Now I'll take you on a tour of the swamp and show you around. There are many places in this swamp, and a lot of them are very different. I'll take you in my rowboat for the journey, he said. Follow me. Germyro walked across his docks towards a rusty, green, 
eerily glowing boat, the pair of oars. Sathander and Gormiro stepped into the boat. It creaked, then steadied. Then he said, I'll row this boat through the swamp, and you can take turns with me after a time. Gormiro unhooked the anchor and began to row the boat through the swamp, the boat cleaving the black water. So I can tell you about this swamp, but I want you also to tell me about yourself and what's been going on lately. First, I want to hear your story. I'm ill for my own story, because mine is both glorious but very painful. Okay, said Gormiro. Let me tell you about this swamp. Then I will tell you some of my stories we go through this swamp. This is the main part of the swamp you're in. It's infested with gators and snakes that prowl the black waters. Cypress trees grow here. Some are very enormous. Demons in the main part of the swamp hunt gators, snakes, and other creatures for food. I will also take you... Also take you... To the mines, where many different ores are mined and made into crafts for sale. The demons also fight each other for entertainment and sail boats through this swamp. They grow throughout the swamp. They grow t certain plants for food and cook them for a great chunk of cash. I'm going to sail to a couple of islands in this swamp. First, we're going to go be going near the swamp where gators are then a tour of our coastline which is near here despite this being a freshwater swamp later i will take you back to this swamp to explore it more gromyro sailed through the black swamp the water the color of tar rowing slowly past enormous cypress trees towards an island of black mud covered in a couple of shacks the mud seemed to shift as they got nearer to the island sathander realized a lot the island was covered in alligators of a huge variety of sizes swarming and fighting around shabby-looking metal and wooden shacks. As she and Gamira approached the docks of the island, Gamira said, Ready your shotgun. He handed her an enormous shotgun with two barrels and a dragon hide bag filled with bullets. I will teach you how to use this. Beware, the gut has a lot of recoil, but if you need to, you can use any magic you know, uh, uh, you know to defend yourself, okay? Okay, said Sathandra. I'll keep that in mind as they got to the docks and climbed off the rusty green boat. She readied her shotgun to fight the gators, but knew she was only doing this to humor Gamiro. Thandra knew the magic she already knew was more devastating than any gun. She walked along the docks, down the steps towards the gate. It separated her from the horde of alligators. She readied her shotgun, but also checked to make sure her primary two true weapon, Jessithus, was still stowed, where she could easily access it, as well as the cursed daggers that Zethelion attempted to use to kill her could now be used as a weapon due to her survival of the attacks. Zethander took a deep breath and opened the gate. She saw a vast, flat marsh filled with alligators of varying sizes, some of them the size of large insects, others the size of elephants, with enormous needle-like fangs. The gators were crawling around the tall grass in the swamp. Gamira said this is where most of the gators roam from to a lot of the rest of the island. There's a lot of food and creatures in this particular part of the swamp, as well as a lot of rich soil to fuel, the, fuel their growth. Why haven't they attacked me yet, said Sathander wonderingly. Because, he said, you smell like an alligator and are reptile-like, which makes you blend in somewhat. But you also have dark magic coming off you. It makes the gators afraid of your presence. Now, about using a shotgun, he pulled out, pulled up his own bag of bullets. He reached inside and pulled out two large bullets. You load the gun by sliding this lever. He showed how the lever sli slid the gun in half. Then load in the bullets. Close the gun, then aim and fire. Beware the recoil. We're going to start practicing a couple of times in this training dummy in one of the shacks before shooting the gators, because once you shoot a gator... He will fight you until he goes unconscious or dies. So Thander practiced shooting several times at the training dummies. The recoil of the gun was very powerful, but she was able to easily tolerate it after only a few tries. 
Then she went with Gormyra to fight the gators. They went into the marsh to fight them. She loaded her shotgun and fired at one of the gators and took another shot at the second shot she had to reload. Then as she reloaded, all the gators in the swamp began lunging at them. Santana took another shot after she had finished and killed that gator. One of the gators knocked the shotgun she had out of her hands. She then pulled out her scythe and began to fight the gators ferociously as they piled onto her, biting her and smashing her with everything they had. Slaying gator after gator with her scythe, the bodies of them piling up, she finally got the gators to retreat and managed to escape to the outside of the swamp. Okay, said Sathander, I'm not yet used to fighting so many at once with a gun. That was exhausting. Yes, well, I realize usually the southern demons fight in a group to make it easier for them to fight all of the gators at once. Without getting exhausted, it also prevents the gators from disarming their guns. I'm going to invite some of my friends so we can get in a group and fight the gators together. After fighting the gators, I'll take you to the coastline. Then we will go further through the swamp to find the other sinister creatures and learn from them. Some of the other demons about more forms of sorcery and crafting of special armor, potions, and weapons. First, let's take some of the dead gators. Not all of them are dead. Some are unconscious. Others have fled looking for the ones that are not breathing. They will take them, have them skinned, and turn them into leather, meat, and teeth for hats and necklaces. Sathander and Gramyra sorted through the bodies of the gators, identified which ones were breathing and which ones were dead. Then Gramyra went to the back of the shed, pulled out a large wagon, and said, We will load the gator bodies into the cart, take them to our boat, where we will sail back to the house. We will skin and process the gators, then turn them into leather jackets, pants, and stakes before we go to the coastline to explore. Sathander so paused and realized that we had wasted the gators to not process them into items after they fought them. She washed herself, then transformed herself back into the curvy human-like female form and put her gold, and gold dragon emblazoned robes on, which barely changed her appearance due to the fact that her skin was dragon-like when she was naked even in her human-like form. She used her sorcery to help Gurmyro tan the hides and process them. She made 12 other jackets, several pairs of pants, and two stakes. So said Gurmyro, what does everyone think about your sexy human form? Depends. Humans love it, but I have to be very careful about having sex with them. My muscles are so strong I crush humans to death without meaning to. I've tried it because they like that trick of me looking like a sexy woman, but they don't think about my physical strength to their peril. As for the Scythans, they think it looks beautiful, but they hate me for doing it because they think of humans as weak losers. They much prefer my crocodile form at the moment, however, they don't want to go out with me because they think I'm a loser for associating with people. I have to now prove that I am not weak for helping people, that I am still a grand sorceress even if I mimic humans sometimes. They also associate my human form with weakness, but forget that it doesn't reduce my strength by much. I'm strong enough that I've even seriously injured a few Scythian men by accident, adding to their hatred of me. And in the next chapter, we will be going on to the Demon Pirate Coast and covering more about the story of the Demon Pirates and also how Sithandra interacts with people and Scythians and their backstory. Hope you enjoyed this episode. I am going to be also covering... Uh, league content soon but I want to at least cover a good number of chapters of this before I, I cover more league content and I will see you then